find yourself getting passed by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So you are in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting with Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani. Not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari, mate, with something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and I thought she's dropped him all the way down at the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Pike's pushed more and forward up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such trouble. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is uh, being, enjoying himself oh, watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
does he oh, have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still such up. He's up on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Panorama for the Old Guys Racing League. Round seven here in Bathurst after a week off to celebrate Easter and an exhibition race to give all the drivers a little bit of extra time to practice on what is a challenging, a tricky, and frankly, probably one of my favorite tracks of all time. My name is Bradley Dalton. I'll be joined in the booth here by James Parfit, who will be bringing you all the action side by side here and I'm thinking this is going to be a real good one. We're going to see exactly how things run. We're going to see how things go. The drivers have been running practice. I've been watching lots of off tracks, been seeing lots of different things go through. But James, good morning or afternoon to you, sir. How are you feeling here as we round out practice? Uh, you've been watching a bit with me as well. How are you feeling about this race today? Oh, first off, it's Barfa. First off, yeah. First off, somebody's going to hit them. Oh. Very surprised the O one thing damage. Damage. Mr. Bill Backer, who normally ends up getting some form of damage. Mm. Yeah. If car uh, in so I'll be waiting for managers to get that done today. But it's gonna be very, very exciting and very, very interesting to say the least. As I say we've got ten minutes of qualifying, ten minutes of a of a short sprint race, which equates to about five laps. And then we've got that 40 minute feature, which is what these drivers are going to have to contend with. Yeah, the 10 minute sprint race, I think, is where we're going to see all the carnage happen. I think that's going to be where the drivers get their pre-race jitters out of the way. We get things going. Practice is winding down now. And of course, this track, you know, you've got Forest Elbow, you've got the S's, you've got the Dipper, you've got, uh, I mean, turn one is called Hell Corner. So I don't know what else you can really say about a track whenever they decide to call it Hell Corner in turn one. Uh, it kind of tells me all I have to know about what I'm getting myself into um, as practice rounds out. And honestly, times are not that far off compared to what I thought they would be. Um, I, a lot of those practice times were fairly close and, you know, fairly competitive. So I think we're in for a good little race here as it goes. We're kind of getting things set up. It'll be qualifying. It'll take it a minute to get going here. And uh, Johnny Hamby, first driver out on track and going through it'll take him a couple of minutes to get around but drivers should get time to put in a couple of good laps here at least to see where they can pace themselves yeah i think the thing for me is they've only given them 10 minutes of quality there's going to be about a two minute 10 warm-up lap then you're going to have a two minute 10 roughly two six two something like that roundabout for the race lap and if you get that wrong you're going to really start getting into dire times of being able to get a time on the board and, and i think that's one of the things they've got to get right they're gonna have to bury their first one i think their first one if they can is going to be the most important one and they've got to try and get that time on the board because otherwise there's going to be no end of problems if they don't manage to get the time on the board and i think some of them may struggle so let's see how they get on we'll keep an eye on johnny hamby as he goes in down through the s's down through the dipper and into forest elbow um before we go into that conrad straight and that's probably where i think brad most of the overtakes are going to take place down conrad into the chase or up mountain straight into quarry yeah i was getting ready for this race this morning and i woke up pretty early so i sat down and was just watching a recap of the bathurst 1000 um of 2024 um that ran a month or so ago and i watched a lot of it live but watching the recap it just reminded me how important this section of the track is the conrad straight into the chase down into murray's corner that is where most of the overtakes most of the action happens mm. um also down the mountain straight going towards quarry bend starting the uphill it's where most of your action is going to happen because really 
you hit the mountain, you hit from cutting all the way down to forced elbow or BMW corners, I think it's called in the modern days now. Um, it's really just all about survival. That is the point of where you're not going to see anyone try anything too egregious, too shocking. We're not going to have our jaws dropping at what's going on. And the good thing about this league too, the OGRL, these guys pretty well have their heads screwed on straight and they're going to understand how challenging the hill is going to be. And I think we're going to see a lot of respect being given going up and down the hill as this race goes through. Um, and as we watch things through, we're watching Hamby here, who is still looking to put in a time. It looks like he's doing fairly good for sector times as far as I can see. Uh, but we'll see by the end where things land because this uphill portion. James, I don't know your experience with Bathurst. For me personally, the uphill is usually where I wreck. Coming out to uh, Skyline is typically if I'm going to bend the car, it's right there. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, you do get it wrong. Running across here as well, that Velcro curb on the right-hand side, if you hit that, it sucks you in like an absolute trooper, and then you end up going into the wall all the way through this section. So they've got to be really careful and make sure they can bury that top half. If they can get through that top half, they should be good for the rest of the laps. Yeah, and that's going to be the big key here, and especially right here in the forced elbow. If you look up real-life incidents, a lot of the times forced elbow or the cutting is where you see it. Um, the S's and the dipper, of course, are it's the whole mountain. I can name it off, but really you can just say the whole mountain from Corey Ben to forced elbow is where the problems are. I've seen cars flip in the chase, though, and that is a scary moment. If they mess up there on that kink in the Conrad straight right here, and they're trying to go side by side through there, you can send someone off in the gravel on the left and it can bend a whole race. I've seen it happen time and time again. This whole track, as I sit here and talk about it, is just a challenge. It's gonna be a matter of attrition and survival as we watch through. Qualifying's halfway through and we're just now starting to get times rolling in here. So two minutes and where's Hamby gonna land himself here early on starting with five minutes left to go. Hamby 2041 and then Elliot 205. Five, so times are slowly starting to creep their way in and everyone seems pretty comfortable 2063 from williams 2084 from belts roy 2044 so times on that first lap are fairly close and consistent of course he can be pretty quick through but i have a feeling as we sit his time is gonna come probably going down the leaderboard i have a feeling that there's some good drivers that can put in faster times yeah michael dion was one of the ones who was in practice of course doing an absolute stellar job and and i think he will be a threat within the board there and um, we got a little bit of an update of philip de, de la cruz who has said that he's just not comfortable at bar first he doesn't want to get involved in ruining other people's races so he's going to stay well out of the way and not take part our resident machine man, pray for Bill, of course, um, is whether or not Bill Backer gets through on his Ferrari without any damage. Now, we've said that Barfurst isn't one of them that generally that happens. And I have put a thing on the fact that he's got, you know, front end, maybe his back end or possibly all of it. But I think overall... It's going to be tough for some of these cars to finish. And I know we've got this thing with Bill and obviously with the, the fact that struggled to finish a race with that ferrari intact and i'm not joking if you're watching at home i seriously do i am saying this to you seriously he has finished struggled to finish a race without his car intact um so and then we put him at bar first and then we ask him to do the to do that um i'm not sure that is going to be possible you know i think the big thing going Bill's way is he seemed fairly consistent in practice. It seems like Bill's put in a lot of time. And here's the thing. Bill is a good driver. We've had the conversations. Bill is a good driver. Bill has just gotten very unlucky. And you have drivers that that is how their whole season is characterized. They're good drivers. They just get very unlucky. Um, look at any Alpha Tauri or uh, second seat Red Bull driver in the past five years, um, honestly. So... I think Bill, if he's got a chance of all the tracks, this seems like the one that it's going to be there. Michael Dion, 204-0. So going up by just over a tenth on Johnny Hamby there. Porsche BMW. Really, the Porsche should have a good advantage, but the BMW is so stable that I'm not surprised to see a BMW up on the top of the 
Leaderboards, the Mercedes is going to be interesting to watch. Of course, uh, Philippe De La Cruz was our only Audi, so it's going to be Porsches, Ferraris, and BMWs today here at a track where, really, you're used to seeing supercars run, but I like seeing the GT3s kind of try to make things work here. Um, Bill, you're in P7. Let's see if you can step it up on this lap. And he's down first, third sector, up second, fourth sector. iRacing divides. Bathurst into six sectors, which I don't necessarily agree with, James, but we'll see how he goes as he runs down uh, Conrad straight here towards the chase. Yeah, I don't know if there is six, six sectors on the race circuit. I think there's probably not as many as that. Bill's currently sitting in second. Alan Purse is going over the line just about now as well. I think, to be honest, you've got the first sector before the mountain. You've got the mountain in sector two and the last bit of sector three. So I don't really agree with the whole six sectors kind of thing, but it's just the way that iRacing breaks it up. And, and um, you know, that is, it is what it is on that one. There's Dudkowski started going up through the mountain as well. He's got about a minute and a half. Whether or not he's going to get this done, is a different matter. It's going to be very, very close, though, mind you, um, because he is just in really the main part of the lap. So it's going to be very interesting to see if he can get this. Finished. Yeah, Dudkowski running the inverted Rexy livery in red, and you know how I feel about the Rexy livery. Uh, technically, this one is called Roxy, actually, as it's red, but I don't think Roxy is truly all red. So I think this is a slight. Little inverse sort of spin-off that Dudkowski is running. We'll see how it works for him. Good news is it's red. So if he bumps a wall, it's going to be a little less obvious, I believe, because most of the walls around here do have a shade of red on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And as he runs down towards Conrad Strait, we'll see exactly where things land as he goes through. He's been consistent, and that's a big key, but he's still got a long way to go down Conrad Strait. you got to make sure you hook up the kink here and hit the right, left to right. Mm -hmm. There you go. Carry the speed, and then hard break down into the chase. Do what you can. Hold it, there you go. Mind the curbs, ah, a little too far off in the grass. That'll cost him some time, but we'll see as he hits Murray's corner here. And no, he just pulls him to the pits. He's not happy with that lap at all. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. Everybody is not gonna be able to go out now. They've only got 30 seconds, so they're not gonna get there um, at all. So these guys will wrap this one up and we'll have the grid for you um, quite shortly. So, Let's get this up and run, running. Let's get it underway. Yeah, of course, it's the 10 minute, the 10 minute sprint session where I think that's really, if we see any sort of big moments, I think that is going to be where the issue lies. And then it's going to be the 40 minute race, which I think everyone will take a little bit more calm and consistent. And Ooh. still, it's going to be action. Um, one of the drivers just put, um, in chat, looks like Sean Basterak put in high pace for 204, and Simon Belt says this will be fun. But Michael Dion is the driver in that 223 that is going to be taking up pole position with Johnny Hamby in P2, David Vinroy in P3, Sean Riley in P4, Jacob Elliott in fifth, Trenton Kramer in P6, pray for Bill Baca in P7, Kevin Adrian in P8, Sean Basterak in P9, John Ulia in P10, Daniel Nans and Jonathan Williams rounding up P11 and 12 there. Keep looking down the grid of bit and you're gonna get p13 which is alan purser you get jesus gonzalez and p14 cole modric and p15 pernell hanlett p16 rick modric in p17 simon belts p18 fozzy fazillo in p19 russell crow in p20 jeremy chen 21st brian dukowski in 22nd philippe de cruz of course will not be taking the grid but he scored a p23 jt sawyer in 24th and robert hadley in 25th so 22nd down did not set a lap time which i think is going to be an indication of things to come here in this 10 minute sprint as the drivers grid up james i know um in another broadcast we do that we talk about this keys to the race when it's a long endurance race. Um, I feel like a couple weeks ago we had one of those and the key was survive, survive, survive. I feel like that applies today, don't you? Yes, I do. I think whenever you come to bar first, it's always survive, survive, survive. That's the problem. You've always got to make sure you do get up through that mountain section. And I am going to be so interested to see how some of the Porsches get on and knowing that Porsche does wonderful Porsche things at Porsche times when he shouldn't be doing Porsche anything. Um, I'm going to be very interested to see how these guys get on up through that mountain. 
Yeah, it's <sighs> the first run up the mountain is the point where everyone needs to hold their breath. If you're watching, that is the point that you hold the breath at. First run up the mountain. We're not going to see any sort of big lap traffic, I don't think. Ah, I say that, and now I'm double thinking myself. You might see a little bit of lap traffic near the end of the 40 minutes start to come into play. But here at the beginning, it is going to be Mr. Michael Dion and Johnny Hamby rounding out that front row. That Iris and Porsche safety car pulling out into the pit lane any second now. Waiting very, very late. There we go. He decides that uh, he wants to run over the uh, little separations. And the number five, Cole Modric, straight into the pits there. But we come out of Murray's corner. Michael Dion, Johnny Hamby in first and second place. So we're going to get this 10 minutes here started underway. And there it is. Michael Dion will be running straight away. He's going to have the inside line going into Hell Corner. And he should be able to take advantage of it. Look back in the back. That's the portion of the Ferrari. Back in the back. Bill back on the outside there. But as it goes through, it is Dion that gets through. It looks like everyone's made their way through turn one without too much of an issue. And here comes the drag race down. It is Hamby in second. It's Roy in third. And you do see a little bit of drafting going down. The long straight here starting into the uphill section. This is going to be getting us into Corey Ben. Corey Ben side by side through. And as it is, Riley and Roy bring it out P3, P4. Kramer in fifth. Bill Baca has dropped to eighth place. But he is still together in one piece as we hit the cutting for the first time up the hill. Yeah, you can see Michael Dion got an absolute barnstorming start there as well and then flew away off the line. Johnny Hamby was in there, Sean Riley, Trent Kramer, Jacob Elliott. They've all managed to get up through that mountain section without any major problems. It's going to be the first run up. How many are we going to see in the wall on the way down? That's going to be the question. Yeah, the big the big part will be how do they handle Skyline and the S's into the dipper as we hit right here. Everyone seems to be making it through. I don't see anyone that's cut the track. I don't see anything major happening. Everybody nice and tidy, single file down, which is what you would expect through here, especially here in this front part of the field. And there we go through. We're watching Roy at the moment. Oh, that's a Ferrari going wide. That was Kramer going wide there through Forest Elbow, tapping the wall gets back going and look at bill back in the background pray for bill bill is saying a prayer for the competitors to get out of his way because bill back is trying to make a run there in p7 he was trying to take it three wide with kramer the other ferrari and elliot he's gonna slot back in though but bill back is showing a lot of pace early on i like seeing it but at the moment sean riley david venroy moving around bill back is now around Trenton and kramer they're up the inside into the chase and it looks like at the moment bill back up into p6 and is going to keep things moving there he is at the moment. He's going to start trying to keep that car moving in the right direction. We can see Dion and Hamby, Riley, Roy, Elliot all fighting it out as well. It's going to be an interesting one though. As we start going around lap two, there's only going to be about five laps for these guys to do that, Brad. They've got a long way to go. Yeah, and these guys are really going to have to start pushing quickly if they want to start moving through. Hamby there, you can see in second place, has lost touch with Dion. A second and a half the gap, and it's continuing to just ebb and flow and open, but he's got Riley and Roy for company right behind as they come up over the hill, heading towards Quarry Bend. That's gonna be where things get really close. If you're gonna have a dive up Quarry Bend, you'll do that to the inside. I don't see anyone making the move here in the front. Maybe a little bit of a wall tap there from Roy in fourth place. David Ben Roy just trying to hold on there in the BMW, showing pace, but again, the walls will bite and the mountain will bite very quickly. Nods of Purser swapping places in P11 and Nons now down into P12 actually. And so that battle in mid pack is continuing as well. But up in the front, it is Hamby, Riley, Roy that are keeping each other through and watch for Bill Baca to start closing time as laps go through this front pack is very close and competitive you can see everyone taking a different line and doing something different kramer i believe has had an off at the top of the hill i think something's happened because a lot of drivers swapping places there and yes kramer is out there james yeah he is i think he's gone and hit a wall nans has also done the same thing he's facing backwards going down the hill at the moment which is never a good job for him so we'll have a look back and see what's happened to daniel nans here as well I have a feeling top of the hill, big moment. Nans, Bill Baca is backwards there. So something happened before. I'm showing something started with John Ulyet, possibly, or maybe even uh, Jonathan Williams. I'm seeing an off track for him, but that is taken out. Trenton Kramer, Bill Baca, John Ulyet, Daniel Not. Yes, the Ferraris came together going into the dipper. So there's one Ferrari off, hits the other Ferrari, comes in, starts taking out the BMWs and the Porsches. So... Really, this did start with Bill Baca. He got the curbing wrong, 
bounces off and there's no room to go and unfortunately for bill trent and kramer had nowhere to go and then they just start collecting uh other cars and competitors as if they were pokemon cards and uh i was in a walmart superstore yeah and that's the end of that bill's done another race without his car intact uh for bill becker so unfortunately for him um it's always next week He's got the 40 minute run. He's got the 40 minute run he can try to go through. Um, it looks like we've lost Simon Belts as well now. Um, I see Alan Purser is showing uh, out for me at the moment. So I don't know exactly what's happened. Let's see, this is gonna be the replay. This is gonna be Simon Belts, who I have a feeling had a moment in forced yeah, elbow did. and is just going slow. Yeah, Was he oh, No, he coming to get the incident of all the others. Oh, is that a separate incident? No, that's the kick on. That also... That's where everybody mm. ended up rolling down the hill. I think. But they start I, coming in one... now. No, because Bill's not there. I think this one is slightly separate. Another one. Yeah, that's the BMW. The BM... There's a Porsche part there, and I can't quite work out. That's John... Ooh, no, is it still Ouya from the first one? It is. I think Ouya ends up stuck. Bang. Oh. So, so it, it is still yeah. carry on of the first one. Yeah, Ouya did not get oh. off the uh, track quick enough. And unfortunately, they all went bundling in. So, um, yeah, fortunately for them. Yeah, and I mean, that is unfortunately that is carry on of the mountain that is sometimes just how the mountain treats i said it earlier the mountain will bite back quickly and there's not a lot you can do about it in that instance especially if you come over the hill and you don't have someone in your ear telling you there's slow cars ahead and it can just take you out so back is still out belts is still out uh jesus gonzalez is still out looks like nans uh fozzy fazillo has came back out uh john ulietz came back out trenton kramers came back out uh, but they are all absolutely ruining the day. But for drivers like uh, Dudkowski and Hadley and JT Sawyer, who are up 14, 16, and 13 places respectively, they're going to be pretty okay with that because that's given them a good day of finding their way up in heat. So then when they hit the 40-minute race, they can be a little bit further ahead of any potential chaos behind, which uh, on the mountain is very important. Look at that. Look at Cheney there in the Ferrari. It has no rear wing that I can see. The front is all beat up. And is still trying to run this race. Yeah, he's he's being a big brave boy with no rear wing. I've got to be honest, but it's going to be where what happens when he goes up through that mountain section. I think that's going to be the problem is whether or not he's going to be able to have that control over that Ferrari. And I'm just not too sure whether or not he's going to have the ability as such. But he seems to be doing okay at the moment, which is great for him, I suppose. But. Yeah, quite surprised he's still able to get that thing turned to be fair. Justin Axon in YouTube chat, that was the same wreck. It was, it was the after effects of the fact that John Uyet did not, unfortunately, get back out of the way quick enough with his return to pit button. As you can see in front, Jonathan Williams and Robert Hadley going side by side up through Salmon Park into McPhillamy before they drop down into the skyline. But at the moment, Michael Dion out in front, three seconds up the road. Johnny Hamby, Sean Riley, David Van Roy, and Jacob Elliott all behind us. So we've got BMW, Porsche, BMW, BMW, Porsche, and BMW. Yeah, it's, I, it's interesting to me that the Mercedes is in P9 of Williams, that he's sitting there. Um, I really didn't think this would be a track that would be kind to the two Mercedes drivers. Uh, one of them, of course, is out, but the other one running P9 pretty consistent through. Uh, this is a track that favors a stable car, and as far as the Porsche goes, it is going to be more stable than a Mercedes, even though the Porsche can be very tricky to learn as the race goes. White flag is out. This will be our final lap here, James, in this 10-minute heat. So Dion, with a three-second gap, and I have a feeling that that is going to be an indication of how our 40-minute race goes, and then the Porsche's BMW's Porsche sandwich here. It's like a double cheeseburger. You've got two uh, patty symbols of BMW in the middle, and I think that might be how they stay through, barring anything crazy happening on the hill um, as they run. And look how spread out the field is, though. And I know part of that is going to be due to that big incident there through the S's and the Dipper. But 
Look at this. We've got Dion after 10 minutes. Isn't that far from lapping off our P20 driver of Nons, who is just up the hill? This is going to be JT Sawyer, and I have a feeling that this is the chase and getting the chase all wrong. Yeah, he's very slow. I'm just wondering what happened. Well, there he went over anyway. Not entirely sure what happened to JT, to be fair. Just very, very slow on the on the run through, and it's it was a a little bit strange from JT. But Michael Dion is going to come up through and take the up through the mountain for the final time, down through Forest Elbow and off down through Conrad Strait. Sorry, but the can't seem to get that live again, which is causing me a problem. So I've got to do it the old-fashioned way, right? Yeah, I think part of that is still the uh, iRacing update kind of catching people through. Of course, uh, weather being a beautiful thing, we are expecting this overcast to kind of stick all the way through the main event and for things to stay a little cloudy, a little bit of sun coming out here in the chase. And for Dion, it's 4.1 seconds by the time the mountain's done. So I have a feeling if we talk to Michael Dion at the end of the session, if he's still in the lead and we ask him, what'd you do? And he's going to say, I practiced quarry bend to forced elbow a thousand times over to learn it. But Dion comes across and is going to have the win in the heat here. Hamby comes across B2 and Elliot spins it on the final corner, trying to find that little bit extra towards Roy. Lucky for him, he's got a pretty considerable little gap here on Adrian. So I think he should hold on to P4 back in the background. It's going to be real close, but I think he might be able to hold on to it. Yeah, the line's quite at the beginning. I think Hamby had to run and then was planning on cutting back. And unfortunately, stick a Porsche on a curb, stick it on two wheels. That, my dear, is what you get. So, um, yeah, not an ideal scenario for Jacob Elliott, but he does manage to come over the line, hanging on to fourth. Don't forget the start-finish line is right after the curb, in, um, after the turn, sorry. So he was able to get it back going there as well. Justin, I wish I could be on this track this week. I love this place. But where are you, Justin? What are you up to if you're not here with us uh, today? What have you been um, doing with yourself as we can see, Trent and Kramer is battling it out through the mountain as well. This is all the way down in 17th and 18th. These guys are still not finished. The Kramer might have a chance to take that position. Yeah, he's going down Conrad straight here. He's going to have the draft. He's going to poke that Ferrari out. So when they hit the kinkies on the inside, and will Sawyer give him room? It looks like Sawyer may actually let this go. It looks like he's far as I can tell a little bit of a line difference there but he is clear so now Kramer is up in that p17 and this is going to be the last of our drivers that are running everybody from chain down is out belts in 21st place I believe he actually did come out but went right back in he's through and now does Sawyer there or Nons there in the BMW get a run on Sawyer and Sawyer just misses the turn goes straight to the wall and that I think is a way to end heat one as we go through so Sawyer losing out big time there but Michael Dion your winner at the heat one by a pretty good margin over four, four seconds. seconds he's got to be pretty happy with that yeah and he survived I think in general um you know he, the fact that he survived was good enough but yeah I is mean, he gonna survive the next bit that's the problem yeah, that's going to be the question is, uh, how does the 40 minutes treat him here when we hit the long run through? That is where I think all of these drivers' minds are is, you know, getting through the 10 minutes is good, but the 40 minutes is going to be where it's at. But Michael Dion winning by over four seconds there, almost 4.1 seconds. Sean Riley in second place, or in third place, almost catching Johnny Hamby. And then David Benroy there losing out on P3 right at the end. Jacob Elliott in fifth place. Kevin Adrian in P6. Sean Basterak in P7. Brian Dubkowski, again, taking advantage of that big incident up on Skyline in the S's and finding his way up into P. Eight, Jonathan Williams in P9, Alan Purser P10, Robert Hadley, Cole Modric, Rick Modric finishing P12 and P13, Purnell Hamlet P14, Russell Crowe, John Ulliet, Trenton Kramer, Daniel Nans coming through. And then from there, it was, of course, just big incidents taking out the rest of these drivers through. Jeremy Cheney, JT Sawyer, Simon Belts, uh, Fozzie Fazillo, Bill Baca. Bill, I'm praying for you. Jesus Gonzalez and Philippe de Cruz, of course, who did not race today and will not be racing, but is still scored as he joined the practice session. So that set up the heat, and now we've got a grid up for 40 minutes. And 
I gotta ask, how spread will the field be? Will it be competitive? Are we expecting another huge moment at the top of the hill? Or did the drivers get it out of their system there in that 10 minute run? Well, hopefully they've got it out of their system. But I'm also aware that it doesn't always work like that. So it's always possible that um, there will be more problems. You know this, right? You know what I mean? So there you go. Daughter had state gymnastics yeah. meet last night. This is pretty good. It is. How was? The, how did your daughter get on at a gymnastics meet there as well? And Bill has been in the community chat saying, "Sorry guys for the heat wreck. My fault. I hit the curb and sometimes and sometimes not always. This thing that launches you." Yeah, it it looked like Bill signed up for SpaceX when he hit that curb. I'm not gonna lie because it sent him on. It was a, uh, it was rough. It was very, very rough to see. Um, I think Bill can go through this race, though. I think he can hold on to it. And I think he can find it forward. And yes, I am. We are rooting for Bill here. We're being a little, little bit biased in the commentary booth. But you have that in moments. It happens. And we are just waiting for the gritting up for the 40-minute heat. We have the five-minute warm-up before to give these guys a chance to kind of just you know shake out the jitters there's two minutes left to go in it but it gives them time to shake out the jitters and you know kind of mentally reset sometimes if you have a rough moment during that 10 minute heat you don't want to let it affect your 40 minute run james no you don't but to be honest whatever you you haven't learned by now on a circuit as tough as bar first you're never gonna learn you know you don't need to go out and practice amongst Again in the warm up, I, I would just sit back. To be honest, I'd probably go make a cup of tea, chill out, sit back, make a cup of tea or coffee, sit there and wrong. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do, honestly, is to just mentally unwind. Because the thing is, you get that 40 minute run, you get all worked up, you get, you know, all very, you can get annoyed, bothered. There's, you know, there's several ways we could phrase it, just depending on how you feel with everything and this five minute warm up, I don't think it's so much of a warm up of running laps and getting comfortable, but I think it is truly to let that mental unwind happen to get themselves into, you know, the right mind state to be ready for the run. And yeah, you know, racing's hard. Sim racing is hard. I get sweaty when I sim race. And that's something that, you know, you have. Um, I mean, granted, it gets warm in my room and I get sweaty commentating, but, you know, this track just in its nature is so difficult that I think the drivers all need time to reset in whatever way they know. Yeah, that's the thing. I get sweaty just driving around Martinsville for 200 laps in a in a cup car. Um, but, you know, that's quite hard work, especially with the direct drive wheels and such and belt driven wheels and everything else. Um, so these guys are going to be ringing, I think, by the time the end of it, by the time they've gone up through the mountain a few times, you know, they're only going to get about 19 to 20 laps in, which doesn't sound a lot, but at bar first, enough to wear your arms out. Yeah, it's, uh, this track can be rough on you as you go. It, it can be very, very difficult and you've really got to be on your P's and Q's. You've got to be physically fit. You've got to be ready to go here. Five seconds left to go in the warm-up, and you can see some drivers are now pulling out of the pits. I have a feeling this is everyone who got up to use the bathroom, take a nice stretch, and now they are getting out and ready to go. So warm-up is now over. We'll switch over to the gritting process, and at this point, the 40 minutes is going to be upon us. It, it'll be, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And yeah, 20 laps is going to feel like an eternity for these guys, James. You're not wrong with that. And uh, for Michael Dion, he's going to be, he's going to be leading the pack around. We're not surprised to see that because Michael Dion won the 10 minute heat by four seconds. So you can do the math on how far ahead you expect him to be by the end. Johnny Hamby in P2, Sean Riley in third place, David Vendroy in fourth, Jacob Elliott in fifth, Kevin Adrian in sixth, Sean Basterak, Brian. Dudkowski, Jonathan Williams, Alan Purser, Robert Hadley, Cole Modric, and then from Cole, it is Rick Modric. And then from there, it's Pernell Hamlet, Russell Crowe, John Ulya, Trenton Kramer, Daniel Nans, Jeremy Cheney, JT Sawyer, Simon Belts, Fozzy Fazillo, Bill Vaca starting in the 23rd place, and then Jesus Gonzalez in P24. So if you're starting a 40 minute feature race, James, where do you want to be? You want to be in the front or you want to be in the back at Bathurst? I don't, 
I, I don't really know because at the front you could be the one that caused it and at the back you could be the one that's in the middle of it so not really sure to be honest I, I don't really know where would be a good spot the only real thing is if you can get the front two and make sure you get away and bury every corner the first lap at least should be all right so I'd want to be at the front, but I'd want to make sure that I bury absolutely every corner. Yeah, I think Michael Dion is probably in the prime spot, but honestly, I'm also going to say I would probably be rather be in Bill Backer's shoes. And the reason for that for me is because if you're in the back, you get a little bit more of reaction. And you can, if someone has a big moment, you can just kind of score a free point here, a free point there, and run your own little consistent race. You don't need to worry about someone taking you out from behind. But We'll see how things go as the feature gets ready to run here. Uh, pace car pulls in, and it is Dion and Hamby there in the lead yet again. A little bit of deja vu here, and we'll see how they run as he gets underway there on the line. Green, green, green is called, and we are underway for 40 minutes of action here in OGRL on the JP Broadcasting Network, and we are going to see how this runs. Dion very early getting out in that lead as we head through turn one. Hamby gets away well and is going to hold on to second. Riley there in the BMW in third place is trying to already look for a move here as we head down the mountain straight. And how does this one end up? Well, for Dion, it's through. For Riley, it's through. For Hamby, it's down into P3 early. And David Vinroy there in fourth place just a little bit back. And there we go. And now Roy loses a place to Elliott as we head up into Quarry Ben. And it seems like everyone made it through turn one and everyone is starting their way up the mountain. Yeah, it looks like they're all good at the moment. Gonzalez jumps in. I'm a little bit surprised that he's done that so early on, unless it's a the problem. But I think everybody has got through three and we are able to get John. There's a bit of a 24 eight. He's down 23. He's our resident build back. We've got the build with Bill to show you how close this mountain section is. You know, we're going up the run now through Solomon Park, and we've got the next left hander, McPhillamy. And, and this is where Bill's original problem started. He ran wide and put it out on the curb on the right-hand side. He's a lot more precarious, but there is somebody up in front who's just done the same thing. That's a Porsche four up. I think that might be Fozzie Vazillo, but Bill does make it through, and Fozzie makes it through without any dramas. Yeah, oh! and oh, right as we say it, oh, I think Bill might have lost the front bumper, but he made it through, scores a couple free places. Oh, riding on board. You can see just how quickly things happen on the mountain here. This is going to be Rick Modric, who is coming through. He's slow. I think it's just a missed line. And then he snaps. Traction comes around, slides, hold the brakes, hold the brakes. But you're just sitting there. There's nothing you can do. And then all of a sudden, that's the number one of uh, Simon Belts, who is also going through. But yeah, riding on board with Bill there. I mean, it goes to show just how things happen. A little bit of damage on that right side. But I think other than that, Bill is mostly unscathed. So the front bumper cover is still on, even if it's got just a little bit of damage. Yeah, it looks like he's still running, which is great from that perspective. Simon Belts and Robert Hadley, that like they have just had their own little moment that looks like this is down into the chase at the base of the hill. Uh. Pain, but there we go. Not a lot we can do about that. Team 53 boys say they might be short on fuel, says the Team 53 boys. Well, we're going to find out, of course, here, and whether or not that's going to be completely true, Brad. But I think going forward, as I say, it will be whoever survives the mountain will survive the race. And that's one of the things that we'll look out for, of course. These guys up through the mountain. It's Johnny Harvey, Jacob Elliott, Sean Riley. And, uh, well, we'd say the only one is about 1.5 seconds. But up the road, David Van Roy, they battle it out once again. Hey, you know, Michael Dion hasn't gotten as much of a run as I expected him to get there on Riley, but he's got enough. But it seems like Riley has really tightened things up here for this feature race as we run down here towards the S's and the Dipper. And at this moment, it does look like Hamby is actually the cork in the bottle for Elliot and Roy and Adrian and Basterock who are all trying to look to make a move. And now Dudkowski is out. And I wonder what happened. I see JT Sawyer also indicating he was in a wreck. So something's happened at the top of the hill. And as you can see, Sawyer is stationary on your track map on the top right. So I can already tell you this is top of the hill. 
Oh, there's our man oh, Bill back in the mix. Man. Porsche's tap, and Bill snakes his way through. Bill, you are doing wonders, my friend. Get that move. I don't understand that. Plainly honest, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit confused from JT why you would make that mood um, into such a difficult corner. It, it, a little bit confused, didn't you hear? As Jacob Elliott and Donny Hanby and Ven Roy continue to fight, and Cheney's down here with Pamela Hartnett, um, and Pernell Hartnett has that place to Cheney's just got money inside going down in Murray's. Further up, Dan Nans with John Ulet behind. Of course, both guys had quite a rough race one. Yeah, I think Ruff is putting it uh, politely, but they're in a good position right now. They've made up places, they've made up time, and they're running fairly consistent. So we'll see exactly how that benefits them. They are a little bit off the pace compared to the leaders, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. So we'll see how the run goes through. And, you know, I think one of the things, James, with the drivers is a little bit of impatience comes into play on the mountain. If we check out P4 there, Elliot, who is chasing with Hamby right now, and they're only separated by a couple tents, P3, 4, 5, but here's the thing with Elliot. Elliot's playing patience on Hamby, and is he knows the mountain is difficult, so he's not going to go for any sort of moves on the mountain unless it is a surefire guaranteed thing or if Hamby has any sort of an error and it's just unavoidable to try to make the pass. So... I think that's the big thing with the mountain is you've got to remember you've got to be patient and i think for some drivers that is a skill that is a very hard learn as they go through yeah i believe i um, believe you're right I think patience is something that we don't necessarily see ed bill has managed to get through to there due to um, him avoiding a couple of wrecks on the way through there has been quite a few and bill does we believe still have a car in one place. Uh, but however, he didn't in race one. So another race that's complete with all of the parts of the car there. Poor old Bill. He's going to go down into the basement. There, there is Bill behind Fozzy Fazillo at the moment as they head down the Conrad Street. Yeah, Bill, you can see the draft that the Conrad Strait gives going down into the kink and then into the chase. Here's the kink. You got to swing it through. You can make a pass there if you're brave, and Bill Baca gets his way through. I do think Fazillo gave him a little bit of room, though, to make that, kind of facilitated it for him, uh, to use a buzzword that I know you don't like, James, but kind of helped facilitate uh, Bill Baca getting that pass done. So now Bill is up into P15. He's got plenty of pace up front here. Elliot can beat Roy. This is still the battle for P3. Nothing's changing a bit. They're still losing touch with Riley and Dion. And here we go. Look at that. Roy thinking about a move up the inside as we go into Corey Ben Ops against it and will continue to run through. And these three for another lap here. Lap four of what we expect to be a 20 lap race are just going to run up the hill together, just nice and relaxed and keep things very pacey but can be truly the cork in the bottle for Elliot and Roy and not helping any situations here of either of those drivers if they think they have the pace to get a win he's not helping them there they need to clear them they need to clear them if they can fairly quickly but again the mountain's probably not the place they want to do it but then by the time they get down through Forest Elbow they don't they're not close enough on the Conrad straight of the chase to utilize draft and get around yeah I think for me, you've got to weigh up the pros and cons, right? If you go for a move and it goes wrong, what's going to happen? Oh, you know, we have a wall, or go down into the chase and it goes wrong, you're going to hit a gravel trap. So do you really need to make the move? That's going to be the question. Obviously, these guys are going to want to try and move up through the field. But knowing how difficult bar first is, sometimes erring on the side of caution may be better than trying to go for it. Yeah, it looks like... The caution part, I do understand. The, the big thing for them is going to be the longer they sit here in the positions they're in, the more out of touch they get with Riley and Dion, and the harder that's going to make their race later on. Of course, we're only 10 minutes into a 40-minute race, but they need to be thinking about that. It's, it's 40 minutes, it's a longer race, but 40 minutes isn't that long. You know, you can't get a 10-second gap and then magically close it through. They need to start working their way up and around if they can and trying to get through Hamby. Gap two and a half seconds is going to continue to open up as this race continues on. Something has happened with uh, Mr. Fozzy Fazillo. As I now see, he is showing out. Um, I have a feeling that that was somewhere on the hill. And let's see, runs it wide, hits the curb, hits the grass. 
Uh, and then coming down, just misses the turn off, goes straight, and calls it a day. Ozzy Vazillo just, I think, joining the list of the people that are frustrated, I think, here uh, for Fozzy. So, he won, but Alan Purser in that Mercedes just lost a place to Trenton Kramer. Then you've got Jacob Elliott and Johnny Hamby still going at it here. Currently, these guys not really moving around where Alan Purser. Williams and Kramer kind of arm um, taking that as well. Uh, Justin BMW is his way more straight line speed. Shot the Porsche has been able to stay ahead this one. Yeah. Depends on, obviously, Porsche itself, doesn't it? The wing, whatever, they're able to change and they've got to make sure they're able to try and get that right. Yeah, setup is a big thing here at Bathurst because it really is where do you want to be fast? Do you want to be comfortable and fast on the mountain or do you want to have tons of straight line speed for the mountain straight and the Conrad straight and the chase? And for me personally, I really, really prefer corner stability, but you know, there's other drivers that will disagree with me. Um, one of the fun NASCAR sayings, James, you know, since you're a European in NASCAR now, um, is a loose car is a fast car. And that is true even in road racing, but you know, a stable car under you prevents you from hitting the walls in Bathurst. So I think it really is just a conversation of which way these drivers want to go and what they're willing to give up in terms of comfort on the mountain for speed on the straight. So I have a feeling that the Porsches have put in a little bit more straight line speed and Roy's probably gone for a little bit more stable on the mountain setup. And that is probably why we're seeing them kind of stick where they're at. And of course, all these drivers are really good. They're really consistent. They're very fast in their own right. So the difference in the car isn't going to be as impactful as you would think here through this long race. We're 10 minutes into 40. And at this point, Riley has started to catch up to Dion. I wonder if Dion had a small error maybe going through Hell Corner. Uh, but on the mountain straight here, you can see he's starting to slowly close that gap to Dion ahead. And now if those two start battling, it's going to open up the door for those cars behind that you see there with uh, Hamby, Elliott, Roy. And we'll see if things start to get very, very close very, very quickly as we go up the hill. Yeah, you can see Sean Riley now chasing down as he's coming into the cut in the left-hander before he starts going up through Griffin's Mount round the green part. Closing down on Johnny Hamby over the last few laps, of course. And Riley and Dion, you see Hamby, uh, Dion was quicker in sectors one, and Dion's been quicker in sector two. So that is where the time is won and lost. And you can see here, Dion must have made a mistake on lap five because Riley just pulled out eight and a half temps. Yeah, but look at how consistent he's been in terms of pace of staying ahead i mean the lap times have been shocking of the speed difference of how fast he owns been compared to riley but yeah it must have been an error and now we start to see that gap open up again here by the bottom of the mountain so dion has really been working on this mountain section i feel he's very comfortable he's very consistent he's doing well and we see riley is just not able to match him through looking at sector times it truly is the fact that Sean Riley just isn't matching him on the mountain. He seems fine everywhere else, but the mountain is really where the issue is coming down for me. Yeah, it is. And you see Dion's quicker in two, three, four, but Riley's quicker in one and five, which are the straight line bits. So Dion's got the wiggly bits sorted out as best as he possibly can, but these guys can continue to fight him for the lead, as do the guys behind him as well. And now we're just going to find out how they're going to get on. What's happening with Brennan Kramer and Sean Basterash? But they're side by side, near enough going down in tomorrow's. Yeah, and Kramer looking really nice and fast in that Ferrari. Seems comfortable. Basterash seems a little less comfortable, honestly, in that Porsche going through. But Kramer, the Ferrari seems to be, this seems to be a good track for the Ferrari for me, especially if we look back at like Bill Baca, who's now up into P14 and it's continuing to gain time on Cheney, but we'll watch here as we run down the mountain straight. Straight line speed here, key and slipstream helping, and there we go, Kramer's gonna pull out. He gets the pass done by the time they hit the hill there, and now as we start up the mountain into Quarry Bend, Kramer has that, has that place of P7, and can now set off for the two seconds to chase that car ahead of Adrian. Yeah, he just got the job done. It was nice and straight forward. He made the move, he made the overtake, and it was job done for him. Alan Purser here with Williams right behind him in that Merck. Jonathan Williams, of course. 26 minutes on the clock at the moment, Brad. Some great action. Dion out in front by 1.8. I can't see him. 
I don't either, unless he has another small, mis another small or big or some sort of Ooh. level of mistake, which is not unheard of. Again, surviving Bathurst is something you just got to be good at. And who knows? Maybe he ran the Bathurst 1000 here in iRacing, and this is a track that he just knows. Um, as far as Williams with Purser there, I don't know if you caught that, but Williams with a little tap of the wall coming out of Quarry Bend, and that is what opened up the door for Purser to get through. And now that set up a three-way battle for P9. We still have the battle for P3 going on, and it looks like Hamby has a lot of pressure there with Elliot having slipstream behind. And so I'm curious to see what happens as they come through and we'll see here how that lands for them. Because at the moment, Dion just looks untouchable, James. Um, but P3, the last podium place is still all to play for. Yeah, it is. And, and Hamby, Elliot and Van Roy, they're not really doing a lot. This is the weirdest thing. They're close, but nothing's happening. You know, there's, there's not many overtakes going. You see Hamby driving a little bit more defensively. They've all got the same, roughly about the same amount of pace, 204.91 for Van Roy. Fastest lap of the race last time out. But they're not really showing their aggressive edge. And as I say, that Hamby with Elliot coming and sticking his nose out, of course. But yeah, I want to see a little bit more body language, a little bit more car movement, and a little bit more gusto. Yeah, I do too. That I think this is a game of survival, and that's the thing with this league with OGRL is that they, they're they very respectful to each other, and sometimes it just doesn't get crazy. Oh, if you're going to go for a pass, that's probably not where you want to do it. And now this battle for P3. Elliot and Hamby come together up through the cutting, and watch this. This is, this is the moment. So I believe that this is going to be Hamby going a little slow. Elliot gets brave and goes around the outside. And then you've got Roy right there who just tried to force his way through. He says, okay, move Porsche, give me the outside line. And then just to add insult to injury, as Elliot backs up, he takes out his rear wing. So that, I was just about to say these guys give each other a lot of respect and sometimes it shows as they don't challenge each other. And then in that moment, they have to prove me wrong. I'm gonna take his curse. Uh, skill issue. What we like to <laughs> um, at the moment, it's just a coincidence that at that moment it, that happens. Also, um, I'd like to point out your lead is gone as well. Michael Dion has unfortunately crashed out and is all the way down in 19th. Though so Michael Dion did not do himself any favors. There's a car backing up. What the shizzle schmidizzles have I just watched there? That was a Ferrari. That was Robert Hadley. What? At the top of the mountain. Bro. Uh, the curb at the top? Yeah, the curb, the, top, the, 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 the curb at the top's going to get him. But why do... Hold your brakes. He, uh, granted, he was holding the brakes. You see the front tires lock up there. If you wind it back as he comes off... As he comes off the wall, watch his front tires. They're locked up. I think there was that much momentum in that hit. So he hits there. Front tires are locked up. Rolling. Oh, that's painful. I well, I don't think. And for Michael Dion, if there's a way to lose a race, that's probably not how he thought he was going to do it. No, but that's put Sean Riley out in front by nearly 7.8 seconds. Over them, David Van Roy, who's got another three for Kevin Adrian over Trenton Kramer, Sean Bastrash, Johnny Hammond's jumped up, John Ule, Alan Purser, John Williams, and David Daniel Hammond. Johnny Hammond is there as well. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't mm. The, 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 the thing is that, the, 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 as you say, the momentum of it, Brad he would have ended up coming back across the track anyway. I don't know if there was a whole lot he could have done. You know, I'm first to you shout about hold your brakes and, and, and stuff like that. And I don't know if there was a whole lot he could have done to stop that car coming back on. Well, and here's the thing too. Even if he did stop, he was still on the racing line either side of the track he goes because of how narrow the track is right there. So I'm curious, if we were to ride on board with Michael Dion, how much time did he even have to react to that? You know, we saw that heat one wreck happen and there was no time to react. How much time does he truly have to react here? Let's let's watch. Comes around, see the spin, cars coming through. 
Ah. Uh, I mean, I don't think he had that much time, honestly. If you're a driver, I mean, he's he's getting set up. He's getting ready for the breaking point. He's through. Okay, going through. Car, car. Oh, no, there's a car. The gap's closed. Where do I go? And that's how his thought process would have been in that moment. So to Michael Dion's credit, not a lot. I don't think he could have done. And again, he, uh, for Robert Hadley, not a lot he could have done either. So I'll give... I'll give benefit of the doubt all the way around that uh, it's just the mountain biting back and saying, you know what, you won the heat, you're leading by too much, we're gonna, we're gonna just reel you back a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I guess as Chuck and Kramer is here with uh, Kevin Adrian. Um, Ouch. Yeah. Never mind. Moving on. We go to the last twenty minutes. Yeah, we're halfway through the race now, James. And uh, interestingly enough, even after that, the big battle is still for P3. So P1 and P2 are fairly comfortable. P3 is where we're watching the battles here. It's a Ferrari trying to chase down a BMW here with Kramer trying to chase down Adrian. And you can see as they head up the mountain, gap very close. We're now up into Skyline yet again. And hold on to it. The Ferrari seem to be really unstable at the top of the mountain, especially with the curbs. It doesn't seem to like the curbs at all. Um, as we run through now as they come downhill here through the dipper and again you can see just back in the back Bastarac not too far off Hamby's not too far off but really Adrian and Kramer and Kramer's just trying to find a place to set it up he's trying to find somewhere where he can make a run and he can make a move happen he's he's being patient but he's being persistent which I think will pay off for him in the long run if he can get a clean pass around the BMW and again Conrad straight through the chase if he's going to do it that's going to be the most likely place for him to do it yeah, I think so. Um, he's got to do it down here. He's literally got this one, or he's got the start finish straight up through the mountain straight, of course. Other than that, he hasn't got anywhere else to go and do it. So, um, yeah, difficult to say the least. Yeah, and he's going to go for a pass here down into Murray's corner, up the inside. He gets the pass done. Good and clean. Now Kramer's up into P3. He's got 6.4 seconds. He needs to try to chase down uh, Mr. David Vinroy. And not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that's a lot of time in 18 minutes to try to make up. Not saying it's impossible, though. Just saying it's going to be hard as we go through. But our leader is starting to catch up lap traffic again. Our leader is catching uh, P18. Who is that? That is Rick Modric and is going to be starting to try to lap him going up into the cutting, which is interesting to see. And I'm sure that no issues will come of that and everybody will just let the leader go through with no dramas at all. Kramer now trying to set up some space there on Adrian. As we run through, you can see Kramer, the Ferrari again, doesn't look as comfortable on the mountain as the BMW, but Kramer is still managing to pull a 10th here, a 10th there, and we'll see if he can manage to get enough of a gap. And they come down Conrad, he won't have any issues, but P3 to P12 are fairly packed. The leader is trying to lap people around, and the field's really spread out throughout the track. Yeah, they are at the moment. Sean Riley is coming in now. You'd see there is a bat marker in front of us at this time. The bat marker will be Modric, uh, Rick Modric there in that Porsche. He's about to just give or take be lapped there. Um, so, Niels is getting a little bit spread out. Johnny Hamby, Sean Basterash coming together. They've started picking up on their fight. Obviously, Hamby was involved in the incident earlier on with the guys up the front. We've lost Dion, we've lost Fazillo, we've lost Sawyer, we've lost Gonzalez, and Cruz never took to the start. So, five cars light. Still got 20 running. They're all very spread out around Barfest. Impressive drive from Quentin Kramer. Yeah, absolutely sitting in third place. He's got past Adrian, and now he's going to be trying to get on his bike there. Kramer used to come straight to his advantage. Johnny Hamby not quite able to get through. Alan Purser is another one. He is chasing down Jonathan Williams. Yeah, it's interesting to see that the Mercedes is up in P8 and is running nice and consistent. Of course, Gonzalez is out. Um, we're looking at probably about eight more laps to go at this point, James. So... We'll see how things go through. And if the Team 53 guys are thinking they're going to be a little short on fuel, I wouldn't be surprised to see some splash and goes come in if in the last few laps. I, I'm i curious to know if they are just short on fuel or if it's everyone short on fuel. Because really, I feel like they should get a longer fuel run than 40 minutes. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. 
I don't know. I think um, they, they should have enough fuel. You're generally you're fueling to the race, but obviously if they've had access to open fueling, it's a hundred percent. If they've had access to put in what they think they need, then yes, they're going to could be in a little bit of doo -doo. But I think going forward, it should be all right. Right? I would think so, but I guess we'll see exactly how things how things go. We've got 15 minutes left to go. Plenty of time to find out the answers as things go through. Williams here. It's going to be under pressure by Purser, who's under pressure by Ulyet there. And it's the Mercedes, the BMW, and the Porsche as we run up towards the Dipper here. And again, you can see everybody just really playing it cautious on the mountain. I think we've seen enough moments now that all the drivers are kind of just like, okay, this is a matter of survival. This is a matter of just getting through. But look at that chain now in the mix. You're going to have four cars through and not too far off of this four car battle is going to be your man Bill Baca in P12. He's had a recovery drive to write home about because he's found his way up to 24th into P12, which I mean, it's a pretty good run, pretty good run through. He's He can be proud of that. It looks like he does mostly still have his car other than that right front damage that he's carrying through but other than that the bumper cover is still at least on which is a good thing to see yeah he's still got part of the car which is all you know he's still got the car but as you say the front right's a little bit dinked in as well and, uh, and there's a few scrapes and that but i think bill's doing a stellar job keeping that car together as he's chasing down jeremy churney and john Ublet and alan Porosa, and then up front we've got bastard still holding up in front of Hamby, no, not holding up, but I think you're not quite disrespectful as that sounded there. You're not holding him right, you're doing a great job keeping him behind you. You see the Lego machine with John Hamby there as well. So, a great job from here. Jacob Elliott is still running there, Edward down in 15th, but it's all about Buster Ash and Hamby at the moment. And um, yeah, see how these guys get on for the next 13. Yeah, Vastarach, Hamby, Porsche on Porsche here as we're running up the mountain. This is going to be out through the cutting into Griffin's Mount, into Reed Park, and then into Solman Park. A lot of parks here in Bathurst, um, which is, I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie, it's good to see so many parks out and about. Something that I wish I had more of locally to me. But Sean Vastarach here is going to try to run through and just needs to keep that Lego machine behind. And if Hamby has anything other than just, you know, fresh building blocks in the pits to rebuild the bodywork of that car because uh, you can see it's beat, it's danged up, it's scratched. It's going to need a little bit of work here, but as we run down the mountain, you can see that Hamby seems comfortable on the downhill portion compared to Sean, and we'll see here as they hit Forest Elbow how that translates, but I do still think that Bastarat has a little bit more straight line speed there in P5, and we'll see if Hamby can utilize the draft. That is going to be oh, a Ferrari. Hadley. Oh, oh, stay out of the way there. Stay out of the way there, Hadley. Oh, Again? good defensive action. Is it Forrest Arbo? Yep. Or is he still trying to get that car back? Hit lane there, bro. Oh, something's just happened with P3. Something's just happened with Kevin Adrian. The Hadley's gone around again. And Steering then he's just broke, bro. Just, just, just pull over and call it. You don't need to try to stay on the track. So, and then they're coming through. I'm not sure what he did, but whatever he did, he did something. Did it quite far back as well, but I think he's punched Forest Elbow's wall. Unfortunately, I'm going to imagine it's Forest Elbow if he did anything. Um, I do see something's happened with Kevin Adrian though. See if we can pick up on that because uh, Kevin Adrian has completely dropped down the order. Yeah, third place there at one point. Going down into the chase. Did you do this all on your own? What did you do? Oh, not enough to cause you to really have okay. a major issue. So what happened to him? So he's Cause... dropped down behind Hamby, where he would be, I would have thought. Right. So, um, Adrian I don't did know, because I had... Yeah, oh. I got him in six. So Adrian in six. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, six. I had to trigger the Adrian crash, so that's why I was like, okay, what happened? But that doesn't seem like anything major, so I don't know if that's possibly just a glitch in the timing software detecting something a little more serious or what that is. Well, I'll so tell eight... you one thing. Adrian has done something again. Um... <laughs> this one on the mountain. Down into Forest Arbor. He's going to punch. He's going to go and... round into the wall. Hadley did manage to get that car back to the pits. He's jumped back to the pits. Good. Probably should have done a lot earlier. So, there we go. But Adrian now running in 11. Buster has still got Hamby behind him. 10 minutes to go. Yeah, 10 minutes to go here. Um, glad to see Hadley jumping back to the pits. And that's something as a driver you just have to learn. You have to know when to call it. All the drivers are going to want to try to keep driving their car, even if the steering wheel is 90 degrees off. But sometimes you've just got to know when to call it a day. Um, and just let take the toe, take the hit, and just don't affect anyone else's race. That, for me, is one of the big things, is just remember that there's other cars on the track as well. If you're hot laughing and or you're practicing and you want to run it back to the pits, that's one thing. But... In other situations like that, just pull it over and call it a day. Just get it on the grass, call it a day, and let it go. Bass track here with Hamby, and Hamby starting to lose pace. Williams and Purser back at P7. Look at that train of cars on the top right for P7 back to P12. Uh, Bill back up on the tail end of that train there with Williams up in the lead. The Mercedes is really proving to be a cork of the ball. Ah, Bass track, a little bit of a tap of the wall. He's going to tap the wall again. Can Hamby take advantage of it there at the top of the mountain? And he doesn't. He's not close enough to take advantage. Bass track carrying on the pace here as we hit the downhill portion. But I think driver fatigue may be starting to play a part here, James, uh, if you would agree or disagree with me. It's a tough circuit, and I, and I think that, you know, they've got to be aware. Oh, Bass track's top of the wall again. You're going to leave the door open. He's even now got to make a decision. Does he let Hamby go? And try and get him down the Conrad, or is Hamby going to try and get him down the Conrad? I think they're both Max and Lewis in it out here. Who wants to draft? The best place for Sean to be is alongside where he is. If he squeezes up to the to his right or our left as we're looking at them, he'll get a little bit of a side draft. Um, so I think got to try and hang on, but it's going to be tight here with Hamby and Bastrash. Hamby does make it through in the end. Daniel Nans is now closing. Uh, to the back of Bastrash as well. Jonathan Williams has got his own little queue of cars. The Persa, Ula, Cherny, Adrian, and Bill. And there is Bill, still got all of his car. Yeah. I'm glad to see Bill still all, has all of his car through. And I'm really shocked to see that Bill hasn't passed Adrian yet because Bill has had some good pace here in the heat. I don't know if it is that little bit of a crumple on the right hand side or what it is, but. He's been showing some good pace. He's worked his way all the way up into P12, up 11 places on the day. So he's still got time, 7 minutes, 56 seconds to go. Roughly four laps left to go that we should see these guys go through and keep things moving. We'll see here. But William's really going to be under pressure as we run. Watch him there on the right-hand side as he goes through with Purser in P2. Bouillet in P3, Chaney in P4 there in this queue of cars. And don't be surprised. If you start seeing these guys get a little impatient and try to make some lunges up and around. The worst thing they can do is do that. That's the problem. It's such a it's such a toss-up at Barfairs because you, in the seven minutes, you make 33. Do you want to jeopardize? Every overtake for me from now on would be down Colin straight up the mountain straight. I would not be doing anything silly. I just couldn't. I couldn't warrant surviving for back three minutes at Barfast and then do something ridiculous. It's just not cricket. Um, so, yeah, we'll I have to find out on that one. Yeah, I, we'll see how it goes, but here we go. Now we talked about don't do anything crazy, and the crazy has begun is the BMW there running a Lexus livery gets a pass down into the S's and that is going to be uh, Mr. Purser up into P7 with Williams and P8. Cheney and P9, Ulya and P10 Ulya is as they the continue to run. Position. Oh man, Ulya so, having a bad day. Yeah, so I don't think we've got slow down at some point, but you should the positions going in through the mountain there. Um, so we'll have to see what comes out from these guys. Dan Nans is now onto the back of Bastarash. They've just almost come together at the chase there. 
So for them, it's going to be a difficult one to, um, to see how they get on. Bastard has got to try and hold on from Nans, but Nans has got to try and again, try and hold, uh, try and get past him. A mountain straight, Conrad straight. That would be about it, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Mountain straight, Conrad straight, and then just stay patient on the mountain. Uh, but it's one thing for us to say, and it's another for the drivers to actually do it. So we'll see how things go here. Bastrack in P5, Nons in P6, continuing the run here. The BMW is going to have the slipstream. Oh. oh, David Vinroy is backwards on the mountain, and he is gone, gone, gone. What has happened here? Oh, the fat marker on oh. the Porsche. Him and Russell oh, Crowe. Oh, Russell Crowe. Did he just not know that the wall came out? Did the wall just throw legs and jump out and hit him? Or did he just miss that the wall narrowed? I think he missed that the, oh. the wall narrowed. I think from that perspective. Him, I don't think he expected it to come out. He's run wide. He's, He's very slow. Hit the curb and then... He's lost all focus. He had to have been focusing on the BMW getting okay. by. Oh, he had to be focusing at. on what he was going to have for T because he didn't even make a move to the right to try to miss the wall. So, yeah, I'm not oh. entirely sure why or what. Even the people in, in the lead have been taken out by back markers. That's down loud Kramer into second Riley there Hamby's now back up to third Nance did clear Bastarash in the end and he's now on his way to fourth Persa has broken away from the gap of Kevin Adrian with John Uya and John Williams um hmm. we just lost Jeremy Cheney as well something happened with him oh is it uh, is it the wall mm, yeah the question I is which wall yeah, top of the hill, let me guess, curb on the inside a little yep. bit too much. Yep, sends him to the outside, and then the curb just hooks him to the right. There he goes. Eh, oh, just barely avoids uh, Bill back of there with uh, John Ulliet. So, yep, top of the hill. Yeah, th th there's just been a few people taken out by fat markers in it. Um, to, yeah, um... I know, I know, James. You don't have to tell me. We've I'm, I'm not really saying this. anything. I just think that it's it's a bit sloppy, um, being that the modern day overlay technology that's available to the, the drivers as to why that should happen. But I don't know. I'm I'm sure there will be conversations about it later. We'll. We'll see how things go, but Riley with a 12.2 second lead over Kramer, just taking off in that BMW. He's looked steady. We watched him battle a lot early on um, with... Uh... Wow, I'm blanking on my drivers. Okay. Yeah, Hamby and Elliott, and then, of course, trying to chase down Michael Dion. And now that he's up in a league of his own, he's just... I mean, he's been consistent. The gap's opening and closing here and there, but, I mean, he's got 12 seconds on Kramer, and it's just it's staying there you can see how big 12 seconds is it's nearly the entirety of the conrad straight this is the battle that i really have my eyes on though this battle for p7 with adrian ulet and uh bill Baca. how does this battle end james because we've only got about one or two excuse me one or two laps left and i'm curious to see how things happen for them it's gonna be very close if this is the final lap it not Barney's hold on and they think they made it by about five seconds um I think for now it's going to be interesting to see how people handle this final lap right do you take the ninth or tenth or do you push for that extra one uh if we were anywhere else but Bathurst I'd say you push for the extra one but we're at Bathurst and the fact that you survived should be enough of a trophy so I would just run it through unless you have a big opening i would just run it through and run it to the end and just make sure that you finish because of course first you have to finish to finish and you need to finish to get points and for these guys just get the points on the board be comfortable it's bathers it's challenging as it is and if you're bill backer you need to finish a race so just take the p9 unless uliet 
and Adrian do something major and it just opens the door and just slams it open in your face and you can't say anything but yes because they're inviting you in for a hot cup of tea just stay in p9 just run consistent run your final two laps and just hang on to it please yeah. i beg of you bill yeah i think um you, you've got to try and pros and cons right pros and cons that's that's the way i would look at it it would be what is the pro of gaining this extra places if, if i've got to go and try and jeopardize my own race or did I just stay where I am? You know, my car is relatively in one piece, which we are so happy about. However, in the first yep. race it was not. But what's the what's the advantages of getting anything further up? It looks like Person may have made a mistake there. But now being dragged into this, as he's only just up the road from Kevin Adrian. And your lead up is going to go over and start the final lap this time. I believe we will see Barney waving on the right hand side. And there he is, waving frantically as Barney. I love the fact that he waves there, but the finishing line's all the way back up the other end. So, fair play, Barney. Um, with, obviously, John Ouellette and the Bill Backers and Kevin Adrian's and Alan Persons. So, last lap of the race. See how it pans out. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Mr. Sean Riley didn't slow down a little bit to try to m make that the final lap. Um on the lap before he would have had to have slowed down, of course, just enough. He could have slowed down by a few seconds. I think Barney would have thrown the uh, white flag earlier. Bill Backer there on side by side with Ouellette there. And what can he do outside on the Ferrari, inside for the Porsche, inside line may have the run, but he's gonna carry the speed there. Bill Backer saw the door open. And again, we said it's only taken it if it's there. It was there, and, but he's gonna slot back in. He did not get that done. So John Ouellette will hold on to P8 for this final time through turn one. And now it's gonna be the run up mountain straight towards Corey Ben, but uh, Bill Backer looks antsy for that P8. He has some pace. Does he have enough slipstream as they come over the hill? and they get ready to start the mountain this is the question and it will be answered in about five seconds time bill backup will hold on there he was within about a tenth of a second not close enough to try to make a dive though and he will settle in behind john Ulia as we go up the mountain for the final time here this is of course the battle for p8 the battle for p6 just ahead and our leader is just now coming out of forest elbow yeah he's on his way down the conference straight we'll pick him up as he comes near the end there. Um, so Great racing from Sean Riley, who's just basically kept it on circuit. He stayed out of the wall, which was always good. He stayed away from traffic, which is always good. And he's managed to do a great job. Alan Purser, well, he's got to defend for the Conrad straight. And that's where we'll see if any overtake happens. That's where it's going to be. But Sean Riley's going to come over the line. Yeah, Sean Riley bringing it down into Murray's corner. A driver that wasn't always leading, but, you know, sometimes just luck and consistency pays out. The Mountain playing kind to Sean Riley today in the BMW. He comes across the line, and he's going to be the winner here of OGRL round number. I've already forgotten my round number. Seven. But he is the winner here today. Round seven. Thank you, James, for saving me there. Um he wins it through with a good win. Uh, Kramer comes across a P2 there in the Ferrari with a good gap back. And Ulyat and Baca still battling it out there for P7. Baca had a pass. Now he's back down. Ulyat in P7, Baca in P8. And it does look like Purser there in P6. Wasn't there another driver in the Adrian. mix there? Wasn't it Adrian in the mix? Yeah, he's done What's happened to him? Wall. Forced elbow? Yeah, Forced it? elbow, I can already assume. Oh... That's just trying to get too, too close, ready to come down. Can't run straight, unfortunately, and um, that's that's the. It, it's a way to end it. Um, I think Bill Baca lost his uh, front bumper there in that mix too. So unfortunately, our no. prayers for Bill. He loses it in Forest Elbow on the final lap. But you know, oh, if you're going to lose the front bumper, you were so he close. lost it on Adrian. He it's... lost it on Adrian. Yeah, but he was so close. I know. I know. We're riding on board here with Mr. Bilbaca, and you'll see. I just don't <sighs> think there's anything he could do. And then, unfortunately, too, it looked like Adrian just rolled. So he hits him, and then Adrian's just rolling, oh, just rolling, just rolling. Still no. Just must uh, pop off at some point. Yeah, maybe. 
Oh, I don't know, well, but... He's still there. He's pushing it down. Though, it? I'm presuming when he breaks, it's going to go flying off, right? That could be why he lost that position on Um Yeah, just the drag of the front bumper. He's probably sitting there like, why will my car not go? And then as he hits... Should hit the brake, the which point. should allow the bumper to go flying. There we go. Oh. It just disappears. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Either way, Bill did not finish the race uh, with a full car again. But he finished the race this time, so I will give him credit. He did He did finish the race. We he have did, to be kind to Bill. Just he not with a full car. Um, so there you go. But there's the results for you. Sean Riley finds his win through Trenton Kramer in P2. Johnny Hamby in P3. Daniel Nans in fourth. And Sean Basterock in P5. Alan Purser does find P6 there with John Ulliet in P7. Bill Back in P8. Kevin Adrian loses it in forced elbow on the final lap and finds his way down into P9. Pernell Hanlett in P10. Cole Modric in P11. Jonathan Williams, P12. Jacob Elliott in P13. Brian Dudkowski in P13. 14 from there we're looking at rick modrick in p15 simon belts in p17 with jeremy cheney in p16 david van in p18 russell crowe in p19 robert hadley in p20 michael dion who was leading in the beginning for about half of the race and finds his way in p21 fozzy fazillo in p22 jt sawyer in p23 jesus gonzalez down 20 laps in 24th he didn't take the race start and philippe de cruz who of course did not race today because he said that he just wasn't confident with Bathurst going through. And tell you what, James, the mountain giveth, the mountain taketh away. It took away several leaders. Uh, it gave the win over to Sean Riley. And I think it gave us a really, really good broadcast today, honestly. It did, yeah, yes. Um, let's have a chat. Robert Adley has been wasting patiently. I just want to see what Robert got to say. But Robert's in the booth for you there, Brad. Robert, good morning, my friend. How are you? Oh. Okay, he's not there now. He's not there now. We'll pop Robert down, and we'll bring up Daniel Nan. That with Mr. Nans. Daniel Nans, good morning, my friend. How are you doing? Doing great, my friend. Tell me, Bathurst, hard track. How how do you feel that you fared? I feel I fared pretty good. Definitely not. Um good in the heat race because of the incident starting going down the hill but i feel like um i did pretty good in the main race considering that the main race is where that's really where you want to finish well because you get the maximum amount of points yeah and kind of looking at the difference between the heat and the main race you know we had that big incident on the mountain but we still had a lot of moments here in this race and that is what enabled you to kind of move forward um tell me how much did you practice for this race i know you all ran the exhibition last weekend or the practice session um was there a lot of practice in is this a track that you're naturally comfortable with or is this something that was a little out of character for you i mean i have driven this track quite a few times um like i've, I've kind of figured out like a general gist of like how the track should feel and different corners where you can go full throttle and corners that you can't. All right. And then does the BMW help you any? Have you driven multiple cars here or is the BMW just kind of the only one you drive? Cause we always have this debate. Do you drivers pick one car and stick with that car always, or do they buy multiple cars and then kind of jump around until they find one? Well, right now I have every car except for the Audi, but so far, like, average fast lap times I've had is, like, the fastest with the BMW I've found. All right. And then, Daniel, anyone you want to thank or shout out before I let you go for the day? Um, I'll shout out my team, Destino Motorsports, as they, um, like, bring me into the world of racing with this and um everything that i've learned about this track has helped me from my friends in the team and trying we're trying to go around the world in 
motorsports racing of um, different endurance ra- leagues and just trying to um, speak our mind to the world that we're just, you know, He's still there, Brad? I, I was going to ask, is, is he still here? I think he is still here. So Wait, am I not talking? No, we didn't hear oh, you. Oh, you cut out there for a second. Oh, I was cutting out? Oh. <laughs> so you had mentioned thanking your team. So, But Daniel, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you go for the morning. So I appreciate your time, and uh, you have a great rest of your day, okay? Yeah, you too. All right, James, and then I believe we have our choice of Trenton Kramer and Johnny Hamby. So I don't see our race winner in. Um, so I'll let you pick which one. Which have one do we have with Trenton with Kramer, next? mate? Go with yeah. Trenton Kramer. Trenton Kramer, good morning, my friend. How are you feeling after a, a exciting hour here around Mount Panorama? You know, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Seventeen to second. I mean, that's a lot better than my heat race went. That's for sure. Yeah, 17 to second. The heat race was rough. The heat race was rough on a lot of people. Do you think it was just the 10 minutes? Everyone knows the timer's there. They know they only get a few laps and the jitters come in. Or do you think it was just a small accident that turned big and uh, the mountain decided to uh, bite back as the mountain does? You know, there's there's certainly the, the time limit aspect of, you know, you're only going to get probably five or six laps into the race. So you, you kind of got to make your moves quick if you want to move up the order on the starting grid of the feature. Um, but at the same time, when um, when we start going and you get all those aggressive drivers, and I I personally got into that mentality of okay, I need to get my shoulders out and I need to I need to start like getting up and through this area, or I need to work with the person in front of me and get going. Um, it was actually myself and uh, I believe Billy. We both got tangled up on the curb at the top of the mountain that caused a pretty huge incident for the rest of the drivers behind yeah. so apologies to anybody that got caught up in that but yeah the the short time limit definitely takes a toll yeah was traffic a problem for you at all we saw several people lose their lead um due to traffic incidents so of course that is i think part of what helped you move up because it seems like after about 10 minutes everyone was pretty solid and consistent and then we started to see the leaders drop like flies with traffic. Did traffic prove a problem for you at all? You know, was passing cars difficult? Um, kind of tell me how you navigated that. Yeah, you know, I, I don't mean to to toot my own horn and hopefully knock on a little bit of wood here, but I tend to have pretty good luck with traffic. Um, Mount Panorama is definitely an exception when it comes to having traffic. I didn't personally have to deal with all too much of it. Um, but especially when you get stuck behind a driver that's not as a... Uh, not as consistent or not as uh, confident in their vehicle going through the mountain. It's it's tough to ride behind them for such a long period of time. And you kind of get into that, you know, I, I got to get around them. I got to get around them. So you either send it into a dumb area or you bounce off a curb because you're trying to show your nose and you get pushed out wide into the wall. So um, I, I didn't really have to deal with all too much traffic. Uh, everybody was pretty respectful out there. And um, fortunately, the uh, the cards laid out pretty well to the point where I didn't have to make any moves to really move up like that. Yeah, absolutely. And Trenton, as is tradition here on the JP Broadcasting Network, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. The floor is yours. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to shout out. Yeah, so um, I'd like to thank Grass Paddock Motorsports. If you're in the eastern section of the United States and you want to get on track and run in the SCCA with a B-Spec Mini Cooper, uh, we work for, uh, we work, or I work for that company and we rent race cars out. We bring the track or the car to you, meet you at whatever track you want to run at. You can run it, get your license. You can do open test days. You can do endurance races, anything SCCA related. Um, we're, we're definitely your one-stop shop for that. Um, and in addition, uh, Connor Racing Products, if you need any roll cage padding or anything along those lines, custom made or custom fitted, he's your guy. Is it any race awesome. cars that I can rent? Or is it just a Mini Cooper? Is it just the Mini so, Coopers? Yeah, so we specialize in B-Spec, which is a front-wheel drive hatchback class of 100 horsepower, and we specialize in Mini Coopers at the moment. Uh, so we have, I believe, 14 B-Spec Mini Coopers that are for rent at the moment. We're building uh, three H production cars, which are going to be a little bit faster class. And then we're also building a T4 Mini Cooper S. And then I believe at the end of the season, we'll start getting into uh, Volkswagen Jettas for C-Spec. Trenton. 
send me a DM because you said Eastern US, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, send me a DM. You have my interest. You have my curiosity. Absolutely. I can definitely do that for you. So appreciate it, Trenton. And I will definitely be talking to you later today because um yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things go. But congrats, of course, on your P2 overall in that Ferrari. Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too. All right, James. Who knows? I might run a real life Mini Cooper. Rude. Ah, uh, we still need to get you to fly to the U.S. Mm, all right, let's get Johnny Hamby up here for a chat. Before we go, Brad. Yeah, Johnny Hamby. Hello, sir. Congrats on the P3. You started out P2. You're down a place. But overall, I think we could say it was a good day. Kind of talk to me about how your race ran. That was intense. Uh, we had nothing for the Beamers. I mean, uh, Dion walked away in the in the heat. He would have walked away again. I don't know. I'll have to go watch back to see what his issue was. But um, uh, he got involved with Johnny, was, with Hadley. Hadley went off the curb at the top of the hill before the dip. Uh, he then come nah. back onto the track, and Dion literally had nowhere to go. He just punched the side of him. Well, so I'm I'm trying to hold back Jacob. Um, we talked about it afterwards with the incident because I I kind of took responsibility for it. I was trying to stay inside when he made that move, and I, I probably washed up a little bit. Um, I don't blame him for making the move, but I knew David was right behind him. I was try I, I would have let him by, but I I didn't want to lose two spots. I didn't want it to get too clustered up in there, and um, I figured he probably would would have passed me. You know, the left hander going on up the mountain, but. I feel terrible about that. I'm usually not that kind of guy. I wouldn't apologize to him, but uh, it was so intense trying to hold him back. As we talked about, I was, he was faster up the mountain. I was faster down, and he had to take that opportunity when it came up. You know, so I, I just feel bad that I ruined his race. And uh, I think I think everybody else got through pretty clean. Yeah, it was. This race was a grueling, rough one. Um, I do have to ask though, how did the I know you said you had nothing for the Beamers, but how was the Porsche faring? Because in my experience, it seems like the Beamer might have better straight line speed for, say, the Chase and Mountain Straight. But it seems like you all should have done better up the mountain. Was it was it a setup issue or am I just wrong in my assumptions of the Porsche? Well, you had some pretty good drivers in those Beamers was one thing. Um you know, and looking at like, like Jacob qualifying fifth, you know, he he's he's always up front, and and I was I think uh, I, I nailed a good lap in qualifying for second. Uh, Sean in the heat was was chasing me down. I think you're right on the mountain. I was a little quicker, especially at the top of the hill and coming down. We could just outbreak them and and get through there quicker. That's the only reason I got second in the heat um, because Sean was coming. But, um, you know, the things, they're just, those beamers are just strong, man. It's, it's those long straightaways, it's tough to get. And, it's, it, you know, going through the, up, up the mountain and through the mountain, it's, it's tough to pass there. We saw that. <laughs> yes. Yes, we did. The mountain, the mountain bites is what I've always been told. Now, as far as your personal experience with Mount Panorama and kind of looking at this, you know, did you run the exhibition last weekend? Did a lot of guys, I know it was Easter Sunday, but... Do you think a lot of guys got more comfortable with that practice slash exhibition, or do you think it was a little bit rougher um, depending on who was there? I don't know the exact numbers on who showed up and who didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, didn't have a lot of time to practice this week. Um, really, most of it was in the pre-race practice, and I and I really tried out a few different things. Uh, I don't think anything I could have done with the setup would have helped with the the beamers. I don't. I'm not sure who all ran. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I know there were some issues. I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't worse because a lot of times you see these become just a real mess uh, on the mountain when some people not not really comfortable with it. So it seems like for the most part, people were running it pretty clean. So that's good to hear. I hope it was a uh, hope it was good for the broadcast. Yeah, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you watch it back. There were a couple moments, but overall, it was a very clean race. Um, very good to see. And you know, Johnny. As is tradition here with JP Broadcasting, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. The floor is yours. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to shout out before I let you go for the morning. Wow. Uh, I really want to thank uh, the guys for putting this on, uh, the, the OGRL for doing this coffee cup. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I've, I've learned a lot. I've, just, I've really wanted to get better in the Porsche, really wanted to get better at some of these tracks. Team 53, Jacob and those guys for doing some sponsorship setups, um, helping coach. Uh, been been a lot of fun running with them. And uh, you guys for a great broadcast. And I uh, always have to thank my wife for uh, letting me come up here and play. 
<laughs> always have to thank the wife. That is a very, very smart decision there. Because uh, without them, we wouldn't be doing what we do. So, but Johnny, appreciate you. And congrats there on your P3. And we'll see you next week, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Smart man thanking the wife for allowing him to Ooh, race. Smart all day. Man. All day. Thank so, the wife. James, any final thoughts before we sign this thing off and we get ready for uh, the next of what we have seven today, I believe, here on JP Broadcasting? Yeah, we're seven deep on broadcast, two down already. Like, subscribe, turn on the bells because we've got a lot more to come and the next one goes off in precisely an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, there we go. Next one is going to be, of course, the iFormula League coming up. And that will, again, be myself and James. But for now, on behalf of OGRL, JP Broadcasting, and James Parfit himself, my name is Bradley Dalton. We've taken you from start to finish. Tune in in an hour where we'll take you from start to finish again. Go.